Okay, today we're going to be doing something completely different. We're going to be watching my playthrough on 2x speed. Now note there are two cursors here. <laughs> that will be really too confusing, so I'll try to <laughs> avoid putting my cursor on. What happened, for those of you who aren't aware, is my previous video got uploaded. It had no audio on it, no voice audio at least. So I'm going to just briefly describe what I'm looking at here. now. Uh, to start with, I was trying to take a look at what this food situation was. Turns out this asset of agriculture wasn't even producing as much as it could. It wasn't getting to the logistics necessary. But it's really cheap. This is actually a stupid decision, I think. But it's really cheap to upgrade it, so I decided to upgrade it. Um, we, I just started to take a look at the other food producing sources. Um, we do have a reasonable amount of food coming in, which makes me think this 1200 is not the steady state. It's just some... Some... Uh, surge on the in the demand. Nonetheless, I sell some radioactives and I buy some food. I was kind of debating. I was saying, okay, if we have 1,200 is actually our loss, let's get 6,000 worth of food. So, 7,000? What? Did I just do my math wrong? I don't remember, but I wanted uh, five days of, or five turns of food, which, uh, yeah, that won't be a big deal. So, in order to get the logistical pull correct on the bottom to make sure that the farm is getting the, all the logistical points it needs. I, I add a hundred logistical pull points there. I take a look at the um, unit administration for the SHQ. This is the logistical priorities. And this isn't really logistical priorities though, I think. In fact, the, the, basically I'm missing what the logistical priorities are. Um, anyway, you can adjust the maximum amount of points, the percentage points that can be taken up by any one of these categories. So I I decided to bump that up to 40%, decrease air bridge damage allowed to 10%, but really nothing more there. I, I don't, and this is just an open question for people in the comments who have been so helpful so far. Where do you adjust the logistical priorities? Is there another sit, uh, screen that I'm missing? Anyway, let's go back and look at our previous, excuse me, our previous um, design. It has now been finished. So it has really good soft attack, 800. 200 hit points, I mean, it's, it's a reasonable aircraft. Um, this is a tactical bomber, so it won't suffer any of the penalties. I now know, but I didn't know, actually, I, I guessed in this video that 33% would be the penalty for high-level bombers, and Gary confirmed that that is exactly what it is. I mean, if you have a minus 66% um, penalty for your heart attack, 33% was like my guess, and it turns out that that is exactly what it is. So it's nice when intuition and real mechanics meet together. I, I honestly don't know what I was trying to examine there, but now we're going to design our next tactical, tactical bomber. Actually, I'm not sure. Do I do it here? So I do mess around with it for a very long time. I'm actually glad that I can, can I quickly even, yeah, I can even speed this up even further. I mess around with options for quite a while looking for a tactical bomber. That'll work. Oh, okay, so I, I got one that worked. Oh, that, sorry, this is the medium two engine. The heavy two engine, which we designed later in this episode, is going to be a lot. But um, I got a medium engine with 11 hexes of range. It should be basically a better version of my original tactical bomber, um, should the struct structural design work out. Oh, man, yeah, I'm at 2x. Okay, good. Let's see. So, probably looking at bomb load then did I get 10,000 on the latest one I'm not sure uh, anyways I'm just trying to going to try to briefly do this video because uh, I realized that it got uploaded so that's why I need to make use of higher time speeds as, as fast as possible whoops not <laughs> that was the wrong button so now we're gonna look at the logistical pull points I'm gonna overrule um, Gugoyas is um, desired pull amount and set it just manually to 3k so it doesn't keep going 4k, 5k, etc. And I'm guessing that the decrease in logistical points going to Gagoyas will um, better allow logistical points going over to the west where the troops need it. This, as I will find out, is not a correct assumption, but I'm not exactly sure why. I probably should have just studied the logistics a little bit more. Um, this is one of, for this video that I'm recording, the different turns that I do. This is probably one of the, it's really unfortunate the audio was lost because this is probably one of the videos I prepared for the most um, in terms of gameplay off camera. 
to familiarize myself with the what I think are the necessary moves. So now I'm going back and actually showing, oh, right, so the start of the video was I wanted to make a few changes, and now we're on to the next turn, <laughs> which would very easily be lost on me if I wasn't, yeah. So um, those were changes I actually wanted to make at the end of the last video. So we had the, I did never actually complete the, I'll use my mouse, I never used the decision. Um, there was one decision that I had left from the last turn, so I absolutely had to do some work before. Now, and this is the start of a new turn where I'm just going to start moving some forces. The good news is our borders with um, Perfectoresso are basically perfectly established, which means I no longer need troops to secure them. So especially with the uh, brigade, the official military forces, not the militia, those can withdraw, and I actually want to send all the militia to cover the radio radioactive zone. Um, and have my, my real brigade pull out to a more active front. Alternatively, I mean, I'm just thinking about this right now, I probably could push forward with the, through the radioactive area. Anyway, what is what happened here? Water purification, which, and then developed um, discovery of high tech. Um, our new two engine bomber is done. Uh, and this heavy aircraft is going to be a disaster. <laughs> Oh, operationalization of the armored led to discovering of the mechanized armored, which is really good. We got some gravimetric shield. I'm not sure what these do in Vormuth, Vormatrax, Vorm, I forgot his name, but Vorm, to me, I just remember him as Vorm. He pointed out that you don't actually know what these special gifts do until you put them on a unit. They just give you some general thing. Uh, some general like oh this is it's gonna put a shield on your unit but it would be nice to kind of know a little bit more in detail what exactly that is if it says even if it wasn't a number if it was okay a new council here but even if it was just like it's gonna increase their hit points against soft uh, against um yeah on the defense or something like that uh i'm thinking about what council to do and i'm basically saying that both of these aren't that good but i'm going to use foreign council because i just don't think that we have much of a need for the... I don't even remember what the other council was. What was it? Uh, the spies one, yeah. So the spies one, we basically have... We don't really need the spies. I don't really know how to get good use out of those anyway. Um, for model design council, this is uh, a change. I'm going to move more towards um, models and less from discovery because we have no units to discover. I think I flashed it there. Now looking at the tech, uh, what tech to do next for the economic council. We could go back and do the physical storage. We have all these, but really I'm going to choose high tech industry here. Yes, sir. Uh, because I think that we really need high tech parts. Now this is going to be where I jump up to maybe 4X. This is going to be a lot of design. A lot. <laughs> I'm going to try medium rocket engines for the first time. And my discovery with these is essentially you have to use much smaller wings. And enormous like truly enormous I, but I tried every option I could with the um, the super props but I could not get any of those to to stick none of those are viable designs so you know always the takeoff speed needed is higher than the ground speed I can achieve so that is not it's not viable and with rockets you can get like a thousand whatever for the ground speed so that's not an issue but the problem is you need you know, 250,000 liter <laughs> fuel tanks because the, uh, the, the distance you can go is, is basically like one hex. And I, didn't, I, didn't, I just didn't like the idea of that. So I ended up going with some, uh, well this was in order to get 10 kilogram bomb load. I felt I could, I should be able to do this because I got a 10 kilogram, 10,000 liter, um, sorry, a 10,000 kilogram bomb bay on my medium heavy bomb or my medium two engine bomber so if like to me it just made sense that i would have the ability to put that on my heavy bomber and why would your heavy bomber have a lighter load but with all this it, it, it was not to be maybe i'll go down to 3x because it's, it's making me nauseous trying to follow this um yeah so we had whoa whoa, 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 whoa. go back go back go back pause Oh, so I was able to get something out with four hexes. I think I actually go back and this isn't what I end up doing, but this is with five, okay, I, that's, I, I must have already moved down to 5,000. Um, 
kilogram bomb. Yeah, okay, so I actually chose that. So we're only going to get it 5,000 kilograms, but let's just get that out there, and I probably need more efficient, but like, I have jet engines coming up. Um, not that they're being researched yet. And this is another really cool thing with the order of battle. It, you get five tanks and two infantry on the brigade, but if you go core and regiment, so core full of regiments, you get 18 tanks and 10 infantry. And that's actually the best ratio, because I prefer a higher ratio of infantry to armor than the game allows you. So I really like that middle one, which means that ideally we'll be using the middle one. And this is where I'm looking at like hard attack versus soft attack. Do I want light armor with my mechanized force, or do I want medium armor? And this is an open question for the comment section as well. Um, if I have regular for my priority on the Cyan 2, which is an amazing gun, and I choose low priority on the all-rounder, what will the distribution be of those 500 tanks? Will I get three for the Zion 2 and two for the all-rounder? Because as far as I know, I think the way it works is if you choose it by default, if both of them are medium priority, you'll get three medium tanks and two of the um, the assault guns. And I because of the Zion, I mean, that would be good for getting, you know, the mechanized and the troops are going to add a lot of soft attack. So that might be what I prefer. But just the Zion 2 is such a darn good gun. It's so has huge amounts of soft attack that I would just love, really love to, um, yeah, I, I would love to have three of those and two of the tanks. Now, I actually sold metal. This is the first time I've ever done that, in this game at least. I mean, we know that metal has been a huge thing. And this is where I discovered that, oh, yeah, something's gone horribly wrong. Because I don't have machine parts. So it turns out what I didn't, I neglected to think about for the agriculture thing was... Um, it's going to require machine parts, but the reason why it wasn't constructed, I'm pretty sure, is not due to that. It's due to logistics. So, and I started looking at, okay, this is where I just made a huge mistake. I decided, you know what? It only takes five machine parts to build um, a high rail place, so we can probably get it. If I just buy some more machines, machine parts, or if I produce them by artisan... <laughs> Um, not sure what I was doing here. Probably, oh, I was adjusting the logistics back. Okay, yeah, so I turned off the logistics after I set the 3K. Um, I, I, I realized that unless I continue to demand pull to the west, my troops aren't going to get food. So I increased the, the westernmost pull point near the new city, near Lossheim back up from 100 to 200 so that we can get more supply there. And now we're just going to debate about doing some some uh, attacks against these guys. I don't have ammo with these howitzers, but I I don't know how it works exactly. I thought if they're low on ammo that they just simply don't attack, but they do. It's kind of a mystery. I'm not sure exactly how that works. So I, I go ahead and bombard them with the regular infantry because these guys have ammunition. It says 66 out of 66 on the bottom. So I, I, I do go ahead with this attack and they, they score a couple hits. Or three even. And that does some amount of damage. Let me slow this back down. This is a little more interesting. So I'm thinking about doing this attack and then I'm like, well, why risk the Galactic Republic tanks though? Because 5 to 1 is, you know, even though those are really strong units, we'd hate to lose it against an enemy that is going to slowly die off. So I decided, you know what, what the hell, let's just do it. Let's just use the artillery, and they were very effective. So what is the threshold of ammo? Is it ha like, do they carry two turns of ammo, of battle ammo with them, so that when they're running low on ammo, but they're above half, you can still do the attack? And even then, with that massive amount of damage that I inflicted, I go back and I look at the city and I see that there's no, um, there's been no increase to danger or unrest due to enemy presence near the city. So I decided not, not to do this attack. So essentially we can wait, there's no, there's nothing driving us to do um, like a premature attack. We can just wait, bombard the crap out of them some more, and then attack them next turn instead. Okay, uh, so in the west now I just want to cycle all my troops over, as I already mentioned, but I had already done that at the beginning. We had these troops, I'm going to keep them there still. Um, eventually Salzburg, but right now I have some other issues to sort out, basically the logistical situation. We're just waiting to get the high, and so as soon as the demetalization plant finishes, as soon as the uh, high tech, I'm sorry, the industry, heavy industry finishes, then I'll have machine parts. Um, oh, looks like uh, as far as 
victory goes, Perfectoresso is still doing pretty well. But they're, I mean, we'll, we'll have to look at that more once they're getting closer to 50%, which they aren't. Yeah, and here's the production of machines. So I think I got 20 of them there, or 10 of them. Looks like 10. So this is a mistake. I was like, oh, look, it only takes five. Do you see this? It only takes, let's go back. I'm not crazy. It only takes five machine parts to build. Ah, oh, the cake is a lie. Unfortunately, this is not true at all, <laughs> which I find out the hard way. It's a really, really unfortunate um, bug here. So the way Vic does it, he lists the five there, but there's actually two categories of machine parts. One, the five that he lists there does not scale per tier. There's a one that scales per tier, and guess how many machine parts it is per level? Ah! I even see it here! Oh wait, is this the next turn? Do we cut to the next turn? Yeah, okay, so I'm, you can see that I'm at zero. So I'm gonna kind of cut, cut for this. My decision was I'm not going to do that. I'm going to come back. I'm going, oh, so I reloaded the game already. You can see I'm back. I went to a different universe. I reloaded the game and um, I chose not to build that high-tech station. I think that was a good decision. <laughs> so otherwise I would have had no machine parts. It's just very confusing. I mean, why, why think would you do that? Why would you show? So if you look at the details, you can see that it's 20 machine parts per tier. Which means for level one, it's 25, not five. Which is kind of a big difference. Um, I spent a long time going through all these different councils, looking at each one of them. So this is, one again, one of those episodes where I spent a lot of time off camera. So I, I wanted to really master the, economic, the council budget. Get, so I went through each one of these and we looked at where their budget's at. I made um, a separate spreadsheet actually probably talk about this better in the video, but I um, I, I only added or subtracted 1% to people because they're already at like, most of them are around 12%. So 1% of that is a pretty big change, you know, almost 10%. So I decided to uh, really give this a good overview. Now, uh, did I forget to do this? Yeah, yeah. So what I'm talking about here is staff council is working on mechanized, they're gonna make good progress. No, no, but the military one is actually stuck you can see personal armor optimization is at 83 and it was at 83 the term before as well which means no progress was made this is a linear technology and i just need to get the military council person to do something else so what i'm going to do is go and ask them to change their their thing so no more personal armor optimization you aren't you aren't even making progress on it anymore and i kind of look through the different options i think that we have like several good options here. I, I actually don't know. I mean, if people have their own thoughts on what's a good place to go. I think I ended up going with... Did I go with... Well, I don't remember what I went with. Did I go with laser rifles? Because we do have... Oh, no, no, guided RPG. I almost went with laser rifles, but guided RPG... So I went over to the assets, the, um, the management screen, and to the types to see like what I might unlock right now our yeah here it is we don't have any um types that we can discover so the um model design company our council is just waiting so in order to yeah give them something more to do i want to start unlocking things and guided rpg should just be one turn away so we'll do that this is the big change i went through and i you know like i said i <laughs> we can speed this up but basically i think i go up one i, I have to lock these all except for so i i I have three that are going up and three that are going down. So Supreme's going down, econ economics going up, military's going up, models going down. Is it paused? Oh no. Okay, staff is going up and foreign's going down. And I wasn't sure who to give the percentage to. I'm reducing interior by one, but I didn't know to give it to applied or air force. And I just talked about the the applied council has a capability five person, so I'm just giving it to them because it more capability um, we hired a really good candidate for the new um, relations council so she has high charisma which is exactly what I wanted um, suitability of 42 is also really nice and we're getting a little bit more towards the end game so I feel like major diplomacy especially on this shattered start it's more important now this is 
Is this the one where I just do it on camera? Let's go up to 4x. Oh no, 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 this is, this was good. Let me go back a little bit. So I did all this work off camera, that's right. And we're going with another level bomber, but this is a four engine variety. So I know exactly what I'm getting here. We're doing 18, 10 kilogram, a 10,000 kilogram load and it's viable. So the only difference that we can do here, we can change um, this 3,700 was gonna drop by a little bit, but it won't drop below 10 hexes. So there it is, all the same things. And we can actually go with, I think it's, yeah, 1,200 cargo space. So it's not that we needed to, it just didn't affect the maximum airspeed. So I don't think, think it affects the combat stats at all. Um, it just slightly decreases our maximum range, but the number of hexes stays the same, so I go with that. So that four engine tactical bomber is looking really good in my opinion. Oh, sorry, that was a level bomber. And it makes me want to go back and make the best um, tactical bomber I can. So I might do that with a two engine design. Uh, although we, we, we might have already done the one that's pretty good. Okay, so anyways, we're going to start choosing the democracy stuff. This is a really good turn as far as democracy profile goes. Even Apollo Nash is happy. I was really surprised by that. He still isn't a fan of democracy, but he, he likes mind, so it made him happy. And there we go. So the, the profile here is just going to show I have due procedure as a possibility, 6% per turn to get. And if we get that, that's the additional quality of life, so it's really good. And I was showing here that we are actually desperately in need of <laughs> of the uh, improvement there. So Sorry if there's background noise. I just have to re-record this at a time when you know, basically as quickly as possible. Um, what's next? Okay, so I, I show that the, this is just due to logistics, I think that we're not, oh, no, no, it did finish. Okay, so it finished and machine parts aren't completely terrible. And I think the um, demetalization actually finished. And not only that, but um, we are only one turn away, one solid turn away from, one sec. Well, anyways, that's basically it. I mean, I had to step away for a second there, but uh, I lost my train of thought. We're at the end of the video. It is uh, 20 seconds left in this 50 minute video, which at the speed that we're going is gonna end very quickly. Well, now in 15 seconds. So uh, open questions for comments um, is, what's the best way of handling the logistics that I was dealing with over here? Uh, the um, situation with the SHQ, what's the best way of handling um, the pull points going to the correct thing? I did see the uh, essentially the management of the percentages you can do where it dictates the maximum percentage that can go to units or to go from SHQ to the zone or zone to SHQ. I could restrict that a little bit more, but I mean, I, I feel like you probably want all those things at a high maximum percentage. It's really not about what's the maximum limit because you, <laughs> if you have points left over, you always want them to go to that. And I haven't, I don't know what the manual says on this. Maybe it says specifically that you can continue going to a higher amount beyond 40% if there's completely unused logistical points, but not knowing that I'm scared to choose that option. So I, I really, what I want is not just a maximum percentage, I want a ratio, or uh, really I want, I think more a minimum percentage uh, that can be allocated to it, that, that can be overridden by a different demand. So I'm not really sure the best way of managing the logistics I'm not sure the best way of doing dealing with the rocket stuff. I'm trying to think what other other open issues. The question about what that shield unique artifact does. Oh, I don't know. There's probably other questions. If you have any other feedback. So this turn is not done. We'll be picking up this turn uh, in the start of the next video as well, which hopefully will be pretty quick because I feel bad about how much this video was botched. Um, that said, I think this is uh, going to conclude this video. So sorry about the, the rehash, the... <laughs> the redoing of this and um, I'll hopefully I'll get another video out quickly. Thanks for watching anyway. And until the next one, stay safe and take care.